Hello, everybody, and welcome to our presentation today. Today, we'll be talking about our um, design called HOPE. HOPE stands for Help Out People Escape. And I'm Daniela. This invention came as uh, brainstorming as we started going throughout the year. Most of us felt unsafe, and that was something we desperately needed to fix in our community. We've been feeling unsafe of how we come in um, to school and from school and staying after school, even when we're going around the community feeling we're getting catcalled, harassed, and verbally abused. Our target audience is adolescents. In our community, there are some streets, some areas, some pathways that we believe are unsafe. A majority of us students have to walk to school and home through these streets. Some of us participate in extracurricular activities like sports and we have to stay at school late. Some of us have to be very early at school, like at 6.50 if we have a zero period. Usually at these times, there is very little students walking. It is not very bright outside, maybe even a little dark depending if it's daylight savings or not. And it makes it even more dangerous, especially those students that walk alone. And unfortunately, they become more vulnerable to encounter people with no good intentions. In particular, the young ladies, we experience a lot of uncomfortable feelings with certain occurrences like being catcalled on the street or being whistled at. This is particularly a reason why some of us feel unsafe walking through certain parts of the neighborhood. This is where hope comes into place. It is discreet, easy to use, it has your location, it records you, and it will get you out of that tough situation. Hello, my name is Marita Jimenez and I took part in analyzing the survey results. When deciding where to conduct our survey, we took into account our target audience. So we decided to survey our school because many of the students walk home alone. Once we collected the results, we noticed that most of the students are from Coima, about 45% of them, and the rest are from the neighboring cities. We also found that most of the girls surveyed were 16 and 17 years of age, with the rest lying between 13 and 19 years old. In the survey, we also included a bar graph that indicated how safe the students felt walking home, with 10 being most safe and one being most unsafe. About 60% of the students leaned more towards the unsafe side, choosing, one, choosing between one and five. Hello, my name is Mary Almazon, and I will be continuing with the survey results. Of the 378 female students surveyed, we have asked if they knew anyone who has been followed, catcalled, or assaulted in their community. 75.4% of the students answered yes, and 24.6% answered no. We then proceeded to ask if they themselves had ever been put in that situation, and 60.6% .6 answered yes, and 39.4% answered no. My name is Ashley. The design's team purpose was to come up with the designs for hope and how every component was going to fit. I was the one who had to come up with different designs. I'm Elizabeth and before deciding what design would be the best, we looked for inspiration using online stores that sold jewelry, YouTube, and Pinterest. We also did many detailed sketches of bracelets, necklaces, and keychains. In order to come up with the right design, me and Ellie also had to figure out how each component will fit inside our design and where or how they have to be placed. Therefore, the design couldn't be too big, but not too small. After we found the design that we wanted and fit the components, we proceeded into the next step, which is bring it to life. Next slide. Uh, we did this by using the software SolidWorks and using it, we input the measurements we wanted to make it. We chose a design that seemed right for everyone. And in the end, we worked together to create the design we have now. Hi, my name is Karimar Trujillo and I am a part of the GPS team. The GPS module will do two important things for our device. When the user presses the button, their location will be traced and sent to the emergency contacts that are listed within the app. The GPS module will be connected to a Raspberry Pi, a GPS map, and satellites which will allow us to receive refreshed coordinates. The GPS module will also serve as a tracker for past assaults found within the user's area. 
When an assault is reported, the user will receive notifications that will then allow them to decide which is the safest way to their destination. Next is Leslie with the materials needed. Hi, I'm Leslie, and we use a variety of materials to make this GPS tracker. So first of all, we used a GPS um, module, which was the Arduino Uno board, which we put our code into. To actually make the code, we use Arduino, which is just like a little site that we can that you can make your own code. Uh, as you can see, there's images of what we also use. The jumper wires were also used to connect to the Arduino board. And we also used an Ardu uh, USB to connect it as well. Hi, my name is Italia Ortega. And in the future, we basically translated the original fixture into a smaller portable version than the original. My name is Adelie Velasco and I'm part of the camera and voice recorder team. We tested a pan camera similar to the one on the slide because of its compact size. We ran tests of scenarios like those revealed in our school survey. After considering all the movement we had, we had gone through in the scenarios, the pen's mic and camera had a proficient quality, which gave us a target for what we wanted regarded, regarding our final project's components. Now my teammate Maria will be going over the module that we ended up using. Hi, my name is Maria Hernandez, and like uh, I already mentioned, we ended up using the Raspberry Pi module. Uh, was the, the mainly reason was because we were already familiarized with this module, so we thought it would be easier and more efficient for us. Um, aside from the module itself, we used the Raspberry um, Pi camera and a USB, which Sochi will uh, mention later, and then we also used a monitor to code. And now Carter will talk about how all this comes together and how it works. Hi, I'm Natalie Miranda. Um, as for the Raspberry Pi, we used a terminal to access and input codes to activate the camera and the mic. The types of commands that we used were raspy still for the photos and raspy vid for the videos. Fortunately, we were able to test various commands for photos such as stitch codes to make the time lapse. Videos were recorded in milliseconds, and we were ultimately able to sync both Cam and my teammate Sochi will further explain the mic. Hi, I'm Sochi De Leon from the camera and voice recording team. And in this project, we use a USB mic in which we'll utilize to pick up our voices in a voice recording. The way it works is we put a certain code where the Raspberry Pi starts to record and within the selected duration, which if you look into the code, the D and F is what's controlling the timing of the audio. The reason why we chose a specific mic is because of if it's an adapter, which is a USB, which directly connects to the Raspberry Pi, and like mentioned, it works hand in hand with the camera as well. Hi, my name is Alyssa, and my partner Audrey and I were in charge of finding a power source. And when it came to finding a power source, our initial thought was that kinetic energy would be a clear solution because it is a renewable source of energy and produced through motion. It would also make it easier for the user to charge the device without the need to take it off. And the smaller amount of times the user would take off the device would decrease the chance they would possibly forget it at their home. The kinetic energy would be produced through motion and would be able to generate and harness enough energy to power the device if at a constant speed. It became clear to us that being at a constant speed long enough to power the device would be difficult to accomplish in certain circumstances where the device could not be put in motion. It was not the ideal solution when searching for a power source, so we decided to do our research and decided on the use of a power bank, which Audrey will go into details about. Hi, I'm Audrey Gonzalez, and I'm with Alyssa on the power source team. Um, as she was saying, the kinetic energy requires motion to activate, and we thought that it would be better if um, something like a power bank, which is um, controlled by USB. Um, we thought that it would be better if that would, if that was um, used in our project because um, since the kinetic energy required motion, what if somebody was stuck in a chair and couldn't move, then um, the device wouldn't be active. Um, and the power bank can be used as a power source for long periods of time 
and it uses circulatory electronics to give power to other devices and it is also portable and rechargeable. Hi, my name is Cecilia and I'm a part of the app team. We wanted to associate the accessory with an app. So the app would allow the user to input contact information of individuals that they wanted to be their emergency contacts. The app would also show the location of the user and when the user felt in danger or was in danger, they, their emergency contacts would be alerted through the app. My teammate Anayeli will further go into details about the app. Hi, my name is Anayeli Martinez, and when looking into how an e-app is developed, we discovered two essential parts, one being the front end and the other being the back end. The back end is where, what the, where um, everything from the user is stored, so meaning the passwords, the user accounts, as well as the emergency contacts, um, everything goes there. However, due to the complexity that's Within that code, we had to ask our computer engineer mentor, um, Paul Luna, to help us out with that. As for the front end, we decided upon using um, Visual Studio Code, which required us to learn CSS, JavaScript, and HTML in order for, um, for the user to see and um, be able to input the information. Next, Angela will go into further depth as to what we decided to include inside the app. The app gathers personal information to use in case of emergencies. The purpose of the app is to provide a safe route to the user's destination. If they feel they are unsafe, the app, along with the other device, contains a feature that will alert the authorities. The app contains a home page, sign up page, login page, and about page. It also contains a dashboard to allow easy access to the other pages. My name is Marisol and I was responsible for our budget. Um, based on our numbers, if our device were to go into the market, the total cost can be estimated to be $44. Um, this estimation is based off the main components of the device alone. That is to say the material that makes it to the physical device is accounted for. However, the device will decrease if the device is mass produced because the amount of labor use would be decreased. Hello, my name is Lori, and before we end this presentation, I'd like to explain why we decided to focus on this particular topic. Because we are an all-girl group, we thought it was important to address what many girls experience on a daily basis, which is harassment. We later realized that we're forgetting about what is often swept under the rug. It has never been only girls who, have, who are harassed, but our boys too. Acknowledging the prevalence of harassment within our community, we decided to open hope to all genders. By doing this, we do not single out anyone who has had to endure such trauma. And with hope, we can also establish a feeling of safety and security in our own communities. We know that it, it can be scary walking alone and being surrounded by people who make us feel uncomfortable. It is unfortunate we even have to make something that will make us feel otherwise. But with hope, we hope to be the start of change and create safety, safe places in our community. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to our presentation.